So again, welcome from me to the Sumo User Conference and to the Sumo tutorial, which has been a tradition since 2015. Uh, so uh, the conference are since 2013. And uh, uh, you can uh, get the tutorial files already. I'll show the link in a second. And then you will notice that the tutorials has, have grown in size over the years. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? We will briefly go over the prerequisites for doing this tutorial, which are sadly a bit more complicated than the last year. Then we'll uh, do uh, you go over a topic which is uh, mainly for the beginners, namely how to get a scenario quickly uh, with the web wizard tool and how to edit networks. And then we'll shift over to more advanced topics, let's say advanced features of network editing, and then um, some, some exciting new content, how to graphically uh, define traffic with the help of origin destination towns and districts. And we'll wrap up with talking about the, uh, the import of uh, public transport uh, schedules in the GTFS format, which we've been promising for, I think, the last 10 years. And finally, it's in the tutorial. So I'm very happy about that. Um, to follow the tutorial uh, in the sense of running all the simulations that are included, it is enough if you have the latest release, version 1.10. But if you also wish to follow all the, the, the latest features that are shown uh, in NetEdit and other applications, then you should down the, the latest development version, and then really make sure to get the very latest development version uh, because uh, uh, the one from, let's say, yesterday still had some issues that had to be ironed out today. Um, also, if you have Sumo installed, you probably have, the, uh, the, have Python installed as well. If not, you will need this for some part of the tutorial. Um, you will probably need a, if you really follow the tutorial along, you will need a text editor and, of course, the download files. They are already on the download page uh, in the in the wiki. Um, let's see if I can share this. No, I cannot because uh, the bar is hidden for me. Never mind. So you'll find the the um, the so in, in the documentation. You'll find the tutorial page in there. The link is already added. All right. So let's start really with the content. And since we're a bit low on time, uh, it's probably better if you, if you follow the tutorial later and now just listen to and uh, watch the things that are being shown. All right. So the first tool I want to present is the OSM Web Wizard. Uh, it downloads uh, network data and uh, uh, some traffic related data from the great open repository of, of, of uh, mapping data that is OpenStreetMap. And if you have Sumo installed, then you already have an OSM Web Wizard link in your start menu, assuming you do this on Windows. And there you have uh, several uh, controls uh, that allow you to, to generate a scenario. Um, you can select an area. And of course, well, for that, you can select a region of the world, let's say, anywhere you want to go, let's say uh, you want to go to Paris, uh, then you select uh, uh, the traffic elements that you would like to see in the scenario. Uh, you can select whether you want public transport, or whether it's a region for left-hand traffic, and finally select the area. And then the simulation will be generated. And uh, that means uh, the data from OpenStreetMap is downloaded to your computer and then all kinds of uh, uh, processes run in the background to generate the scenario for you. And uh, boom, the simulation pops up on your screen uh, with uh, plenty of things that we'll go over in the next slides. All right. Um, the as I said, uh, files are downloaded and files are generated. So um, let's uh, first take a look at uh, the simulation, the, the scenario that, that was built as part of the tutorial. Uh, 
uh, well, if you've downloaded the files, um, it's in the tutorial 01 wizard folder. And uh, just as a simulation pops up, when you click this in the wizard, you can start this uh, by clicking the sumo config. And uh, then you start your simulation with this big play button. And then uh, all you see is a timer running, but you have to squint your eyes and look really careful to see the cars moving. You probably won't be even seeing that here over the, over the connection. But if you zoom in, then you can see that there's traffic running in the network uh, with a certain uh, uh, delay that is pre-configured. You can slow it down and speed it up with the delay slider up here. Um, and uh, this is your simulation. Uh, we'll look at that more closely, but first let's go briefly over all the stuff that has been put on your hard drive when you generate the scenarios. So the most important thing is the sumo config file. Uh, it tells to, ties together all the different components that make up the simulation, namely the traffic network, customarily named with the ending net XML, and then all kinds of traffic definition files for the passenger cars, for the pedestrians, public transport. Um, then there's a file for infrastructure, the, the stops, um, some uh, files to make the, uh, the simulation more appealing, background polygons of buildings and, on, and land use, and finally some settings on how to present the simulation. And then there are some files that aren't really necessary for running the simulation, but which are important for rebuilding scenarios with different settings. This is the raw OSM data, and then all kinds of configuration uh, and batch files that we'll probably talk about as well in the next slides. All right. Um, so let's look at the simulation again. And uh, when we run this, what we do see in the bottom screen that there are some warnings scrolling along here. And uh, we may want to uh, uh, find out really quickly uh, what's going on here. And one way to look at this scenario is to, to change some of the, the settings of the visualization. Uh, so I'm zooming out to the whole scenario again with this button. And then I'm launching the configuration for the graphical settings. And the first thing I want to see is all the cars. So I'll just uh, increase their drawing size a little bit. Now you see all the little yellow cars. Let's make the color a bit more informative. We could color them by their waiting time. So now we see that some of the cars uh, are shaded in a different hue, which means they, they are waiting, which is, might be a sign of problems with traffic, um, but uh, they tend to go back to the blue color after a little while. So maybe that isn't too bad. Instead, let's color them by the accumulated wait time. So over, this counts over the last 100 simulated seconds, how much of that time was spent waiting rather than how many cars are actually waiting all the time. So here we have a huge red area, which means there is a jam here. And uh, if we zoom in, uh, this is uh, done by holding the right mouse button and moving the mouse up and down. Um, we see that there's a big jam at this intersection. And uh, now the question is why? What, what's happening here? We see that this looks a bit strange. There are those red bars that signify traffic lights and they're somehow in the middle of the intersection or oh, this looks bad. Um, so I guess this will be our first area of fixing problems with the network uh, with the help of the graphical network editor, NetEdit. Um, so um, those that uh, have been following the tutorial from last year, uh, they may recall that we had the very same area uh, and that we didn't have this problem with our initial import. And so what are the difference compared to last year? Well, of course, the data of OpenStreetMap has been updated. And in this year, uh, I didn't talk about it yet, but uh, what I did add is uh, more bike traffic. 
and actually by adding bike traffic, additional bicycle lanes are imported from OpenStreetMap. So these are all changes. And it turns out that yes, indeed, adding those lanes changes some of the network geometry and then uh, some of the functionality that, that processes this network works differently. And suddenly there is a, a one part fails here and it uh, doesn't build a nice junction. So we will fix this and uh, uh, just be aware, this is always something that can happen to you if you import data from OpenStreetMap. All right, so let's, let's fix this. Um, you can launch uh, the wizard uh, from the menu here. I'll just use the short shortcut control T uh, and uh, I'll get the, the network um, view at the point where I saw it in the simulation. And so the, the concept here is that we have a, a complex intersection that is modeled in the OpenStreetMap database with lots of uh, elements that are joined together, whereas our simulation would prefer it if that was one intersection only. So we'll move, we'll switch the, the editing mode of NetEdit to the uh, selection mode and just click on all these uh, red dots that uh, make up this complex cluster of intersections. And then we'll use hotkey F7 to join this. And now if we want to see the actual geometry of the junction, we can press a five to see that this has been now joined in one area. And when we save this network, uh, we've already fixed the problem. Uh, however, um, we cannot uh, use this fixed network directly for our simulation because in the, in the traffic that was generated, uh, the cars were using some of the network elements that were inside this complex cluster. So these roads are now gone. So in order to, to really uh, make the simulation run, we have to uh, uh, call a little script that is uh, part of, the, of what the web wizard builds, a little uh, uh, traffic generation script. And if we run this by double clicking, it, it calls all the tools that build the traffic again so that it matches the network. And uh, you can find those results um, already in this, uh, in this uh, folder, the, the 02 folder. And uh, then the simulation looks quite different. So here is the, the, the corrected junction or intersection. And as you can see with the same coloring mode as before by accumulated waiting time, uh, it works fine now in this area. So um, let's uh, put this, uh, the significance of this uh, single fix in numbers. Uh, you can run the simulation with some, uh, with some options that generate these uh, statistics. Uh, and you will find that um, the, the time that cars spend waiting uh, has shrunk significantly. So before, of, of, the, of the, the, the duration, of the average duration of a vehicle in the simulation, uh, more than half the time was, uh, uh, was lost, uh, time lost due to standing or driving very slowly. Almost half the time was spent really standing. And now the duration has shrunk and the cars don't spend nearly as much time waiting. Um, and I'd say, um, uh, in, in for, for city traffic, where you do have traffic lights, this is a very plausible time spent waiting. So yes, that looks good. Um, all right. So um, uh, it, it will often be the case that the kind of problems that you get when importing uh, networks from OpenStreetMap lead to decreased efficiency of traffic. So um, it's, it's a good heuristic to, to look for jamming, and see if they may be due to a problem with the network themselves. Okay. Um, then let's uh, um, look at a different kind of, of uh, fix that we can do because not all fixes uh, have to improve the performance. Let's 
let's uh, um, talk about uh, traffic lights. So uh, as you may know, traffic light uh, plans are not part of the OpenStreetMap database. Instead, for our purpose, uh, we have tools that uh, generate plausible signal plans um, to make the simulation run, because uh, without the plan, you can't even run the simulation. So um, again, looking at this intersection we already had before in NetEdit, we can switch to the traffic light mode by, mode by uh, either using this menu or, or pressing the letter T, which is here, uh, which is also documented. So just learn those uh, uh, mnemonics and you will be much faster. Um, and then we can click on the uh, intersection and we'll see uh, the traffic light plan here. We can uh, go through the different phases of the traffic light. And what we do see is that there are phases where uh, both those, uh, um, um, well, let's, well, <laughs> I can't really call them north to south. Uh, this direction, if you can follow the mouse, um, has green at the same time. And then there's a phase for the left turning movements. And then um, actually the, the trams get their own phase. And then we have the, the orthogonal direction again with the left turn phase. Now, um, as this is an area actually near the German Aerospace Center, it's an intersection that I know quite well. And I know that this is not actually the correct uh, uh, signal plan layout. It looks different in reality. And uh, we can fix this again um, by changing some properties of this intersection. So um, I'll leave the traffic light mode and instead go to inspect mode, pressing the letter I. And then I can see some properties for this intersection. And I see the, the layout of the traffic light is set to the value of opposites, which, uh, 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 which means that opposite sides um, get the green light at the same time. That's the idea. And now we can switch it to the layout incoming, which means that each incoming arm of the traffic light gets their own phase. So let's go back to the traffic light mode and see how the signal plan looks now. As I said, every arm gets their own green phase. And that's actually how it works in real life at this intersection. Um, in some countries, this is the default layout. Uh, and you actually can set an option in the NetConvert program to get all your layouts in this format uh, if that is more typical for your area. Uh, you will find all these options explained, of course, in the documentation for traffic lights and their default programs. So uh, let's look at this in the simulation. Uh, and let's look at it run. Um, we have this here. And let's see how the phases switch. I'll slow this down a bit. Now, let's add some simulation delay and see how it runs. And you can see each side gets their, gets their green phase. And if we do some measurements on what this does to the traffic performance, we actually see that uh, the, the travel times increase, um, which just goes to show that not every fix will, uh, will make the traffic flow better, which is, uh, I guess, what you should expect. Um, and uh, uh, how would you get those statistics that I showed on the previous slide? Um, what you can do is you can um, open, well, one thing you can do is you can, um, open up a command line window and run the simulation in batch mode. So you don't start the graphics application Sumo GUI. Instead, you just start the Sumo application. Um, and then it will output all those measures here. And you can uh, uh, find those statistics as human readable time values. Um, of course, there are options to get this as in form of XML output for you to process with other tools. If you just want to look at those statistics, uh, the, the console output uh, is often quite useful. All right. Um, 
let's uh, do more fixes to the network. Um, we're now going to the uh, more advanced topic or rather uh, more advanced and novel uh, because I want to show you a new feature that was added, uh, especially for bicycle simulation. And this is indirect bicycle turns. Uh, let's look at this in the network. Um, we'll leave the traffic light mode and we'll go to some other intersection. And uh, in the default view, you won't actually see the, the vehicle connections, but you can activate them with this button. Actually, there's even a shortcut for that. That would be Alt-5. Uh, and now you have all those uh, interesting lines going over the intersection. And uh, what you can see here, that there are some uh, uh, bicycle turns um, that, uh, that move over the intersection in a single arc. And especially for big and complex intersections, this is not what, uh, what uh, traffic planners usually want because it's dangerous. I guess also bicyclists shouldn't want this. Um, and so what bicycles often do in real life is they perform an indirect turning maneuver, which means they first move straight across, um, which uh, has the advantage of not crossing so many lines of traffic. And then they wait at the corner to do a straight cross again. And if you want this in your simulation, you just uh, activate this little checkbox here, indirect. And if you now rebuild all the geometry with the uh, F5 button or the recompute thing, you can see that we now have, um, uh, we have a, a different shape of the connection. And actually there is a small waiting spot. You may be able to see the faint line here. Uh, there's a waiting spot uh, where the bicycles wait for the traffic light to switch to the appropriate phase. So let's look at this in the simulation. That, uh, yeah, that's the one already. Um, let's see. Um, and you already see those. Well, actually, you can see them here. The bicycles are waiting and then they're moving across once the light switches. If you uh, want to inspect that traffic light, or rather make it more visible. You can also uh, change the visualization settings again with this uh, button here and disable drawing of the intersection shape. And what you will see is that there are even little traffic lights that indicate uh, the, the, the state for, for the cyclists that are doing their indirect turn. So new features for traffic lights. And what you could actually do is, instead of uh, clicking those connections one by one, you could use the advanced selection and filtering mechanisms of SnetEdit uh, to affect this change for, for many uh, bicycle connections. And since this, this uh, selection mode is such a useful thing, I, I, I want to show you some of those details. So um, the first thing, we may want to do is uh, consider a specific area. So it would be nice if we could select all the connections in a specific area. Rec uh, the, when you hold the shift key in the selection mode, and do it by the letter S, you can do a rectangle selection, but then you get all the objects in the selection. So hit escape to go back on that selection and instead, uh, you can lock all the elements and then just unlock the connections. So this is one of the new features for uh, doing locking, uh, uh, doing selection filtering. Um, let's, uh, and since I'm done with that now, I'll, I'll go back and unlock all elements. So we can see now 1000 connections have been selected, but maybe, uh, those are all kinds of connections for pedestrians or car. Let's just uh, look for the bicycle connection. So what we do is 
we, we uh, refine our selection by selecting the allow attribute. And what we want to do is we don't want to add, we just want to keep all the connections that match those attributes. So uh, I'm typing this out here. So we want to filter the selection to all the connections that allow bicycles, actually exactly bicycles. So now there are much fewer connections as you can see here. And there are all those that uh, start or end in those uh, bicycle rails. But we're not done yet because we also have some straight connections in our mix. So let's filter this some more. Filter this by the direction of the connection. That would be straight. And we have even fewer connections. Um, and uh, now, actually that was just the, the wrong thing. We want to filter it for the turns, the left turns. So I'll go back on, on my, on my uh, selection, change the letter here. And now I have the turns. And what I can do is I can go back to inspect mode, click on inspect mode, click on one of those selected objects. It tells me I have actually 22 things in my inspection and I can make them all indirect. And uh, Oh, actually this, yes, this did the job. All right, so this is what I wanted to show you. Um, selection mode has very powerful uh, tools for working with selections and it allows you to uh, edit the attributes of many elements. At least. Okay. And we already saw that in the simulation actually. Okay, now let's move over to the next uh, section of the tutorial after the network editing uh, we have to deal with the traffic the original uh, scenario that was created by the web user tool um, has mostly random traffic that that's because there's no uh, no good source of uh, traffic data that would be workable for the whole world so we could just integrate it with the wizard so we use random traffic to to be able to build something for everyone so the cars, they have random origins and destinations, and then they just use the fastest route according to the current traffic conditions. Um, um, the public transport for that, we actually have some data in OSM because it contains the, 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 the route, which is the, the, the list of network elements that are being driven along with the stops, and maybe even the, the timing interval between successive uh, buses or trams of the same line, but we don't have the time. So the public transport in this scenario is, is uh, uh, synthetic in that it uses all the data from OpenStreetMap and then it uh, guesses the, the starting time for a particular line and then derives all the other timings from a little background simulation. So it's a plausible way to to get a transport schedule in the simulation, but it's definitely not the correct schedule. And then the persons, again, they have random origins and destinations, but they use the fastest in the modal route, which means they could either walk or they can use a succession of walks and rides with public transport. Now, last year, we talked about using uh, traffic, local traffic counts to redefine our traffic scenario. If you're interested in that, uh, I recommend that you look at last year's tutorial. Uh, but this year we're going to do it differently. We'll use an OD matrix. Uh, so that's short for origin destination matrix, uh, which is based on a uh, definition of areas uh, in, our, in our simulation. And then we define traffic that goes from one area to the other uh, with some kind of process which says, well, actually, if you want to start in this area, then I'll pick a, a starting uh, edge in that area for you. So it's a two-step process, but those matrices are powerful because they, uh, they can be used with existing area definitions and they're often um, available because, um, maybe not often, but they are available because uh, uh, other people collect that kind of data. Um, so 
this is what we were going to do for the car traffic. And then we'll replace the synthetic uh, public transport schedules with the actual uh, GTFS data, the general transit field specification, which is available for many locations, but not all cities of the world. So uh, the OD traffic. Um, there, there is a tool, uh, part of the Sumo toolbox called OD2 trips, uh, which uses a definition of, of traffic zones um, along with a, with, a, with a matrix definition, which says how many uh, trips go from each zone to each other zone. And so the first thing we need to do is define some of the zones. Now, you could do this uh, manually uh, in NetEdit in the TETS uh, uh, edit mode, TETS for traffic analysis zone, traffic assignment zone. Uh, and you could actually just uh, draw such a zone um, and do this for many zones. Um, but this is often not what you want to do. Either you, you can load those zones from some data set you have, or maybe you just want to do this in a more abstract way. Uh, what we're going to use is we're going to generate a grid of zones. And there's a tool, a part of Sumo, uh, that's called uh, grid districts. And we run it with those parameters, uh, a network, an output file, we'll specify the width of the grid cells, and we say it shall be a, a grid for passenger cars. Uh, you can also run this with the batch file in the 04 folder. And when we do this, uh, we get a file that looks like this. So it's just a bunch of XML lines with, uh, with shapes and, and lists of network elements, namely edges, that make up those zones. But let's look at that in Sumo GUI. And what we see here are uh, the rectangles of the zones. They have been assigned random colors by the tool. Uh, and then the edges are colored according to the, the zone color. So to see them more nicely. And you see for the for the uh, for those settings, only the edges that permit passenger cars uh, are actually part of the zone definition. So those are our zones. And now we want to define traffic between those zones. All right. Um, what we do is we load the network. I'll just reload this again. And then let's load the zones. So you can do this with the additional elements. And then it's the file we just generated, the grid. And here are our zones. Now, what we want to do next is we want to define um, we want to define the OD matrix. And for this, we use the, the data mode of NetEdit, uh, which uh, is used to uh, edit and visualize network related data. Last year, we looked at the counts on edges and, uh, and turns, uh, but we can also define counts uh, or relations between those uh, uh, TATs, those traffic assignment zones. So let's go to the data mode, that would be F the F4 key. Um, and then we go to the, to the TUTS mode. And the first thing we, want, we have to do is define a new data set. Let's call this test. And we have to define for what time interval that data is relevant. So let's just uh, use the default of one hour. And now we can uh, define relations between those zones. Um, now, it may be more useful if we can click anywhere instead of just on those uh, thin lines. So there's another button for that. Uh, and now we can define our traffic relations. Let's say we have a relation from here to there. Now, this is modeled via attributes, via the count attributes. So I'll just uh, set this attribute here, I typed it out. You could also edit it with a little dialog. And now let's create a relation uh, between those uh, two zones, confirmed with the enter key. And now actually there, there's gonna be a button that you can click uh, instead of remembering it's the enter key, but 
that mode is pretty fresh. We did lots of uh, uh, features last week. And so uh, just check back uh, in another week or so. But you can see the line here, which defines the relation. Uh, we can also inspect this and go back on the attributes. And uh, uh, if you do this uh, for all the relations that you want to want to define, um, then uh, you can save that and get a file like this. Let's see where we have it. Uh, it's actually a pretty simple format. You could also generate that with some some process. So it's a relation between those two zones uh, with a count value of 1000 uh, for a specific interval and that's that. All right, so now, uh, as I said before, we, we can use the OD to trips tool to, uh, to combine that, those zone, that zone definition with the counts. Um, there's a batch file for that. And then there's just a small hitch because um, that tool doesn't know anything about connectivity in the network. So you could have gotten uh, a trip that ends, let's say, on this edge here. Um, and as you can see, this edge has no predecessor. So you cannot reach that edge from anywhere. So some of those trips aren't actually valid. And uh, to filter those out, we can run the DAA router application, which uh, just throws out all these erroneous trips and gives you the valid trips only, um, which and so unfortunately reduced the number from 1000 to 964. So you may have to compensate that. Uh, but then you have a, a OD trap. And let's look at this in the simulation. Um, as you can see, the traffic all originates in one zone and then it moves to another zone. So uh, this isn't a very realistic traffic definition. That's far too much traffic for that little area, but it shows you that the, the origin of the traffic is spread out over an area. So it's just not a single edge, which you could define with a flow definition. Rather, it's traffic from one area to another area. And then you see it moving through the network. Of course, we kept the public transport, which is still going around here. So that's that. That's traffic from origin destination matrices. Now to the last part of the tutorial, uh, there are still two minutes left. Uh, let's talk about the general transit specification. That's a plain text format original introduced by Google. And now many, many uh, providers of public transport data are actually publishing their data. A good website for that is transitfeeds.com. And you can just uh, select an area, city, and get your GTFS file typically named gtfs.zip. And uh, Sumo uh, now brings a tool that can import this data. It's the GTFS to PT to public transport PI tool. And you give it the network and the GTFS file and a date and an output file um, and off you go. Uh, I've put all this together in an OSM batch file. Always be careful if you want to copy those commands out of slides, sometimes the dashes get broken uh, by, by your presentation tools or by Word or PowerPoint or whatever. So if in doubt, type, type out those, uh, those commands. Sometimes you'll have funny problems because it's a typographic dash instead of a, a real dash. Um, so that's what that script does is it generates infrastructure, where are the stops, uh, and it generates the the individual vehicles that make up the public transport, each with their real schedule. Um, and if you want the, the persons to actually use that public transport, then of course you have to uh, tie that in when generating the persons. So um, where there's this, uh, we had this batch script before that, uh, that generates uh, all kinds of traffic and uh, now, if we're talking about the GTFS thing, we have to modify that batch script, at least for the persons, to make sure that it uses all those, uh, all those files that were just generated from the GTFS. So just beware of that. 
Of course, there's a GTFS tutorial on the documentation where you can look all that up. So um, let's look at a simulation uh, with that uh, GTFS traffic. Well, actually, no, because the time is up. So let's uh, save some time. Um, what we can do is we can look at the types of plants that are generated uh, when the persons use that public transport. For that, we have the script analyze persons plant in, in, uh, in the Sumo tools. And it will tell you that for the original OSM web wizard scenario, we have uh, uh, about, well, we have a certain amount of walks, and then we have lots of trips that alternate between walking and public transport. Now, if we do uh, the GTFS import, suddenly the number of walks goes up. And why is that? Well, the first thing that we have to recognize is that now suddenly times are important. Uh, we, use the, we first generated our traffic from second zero to second 3,600. This is uh, shortly after midnight. And so there is not much public transport at that time of the day. So if you generate your persons, make sure they actually run uh, or walk at a time that is more realistic. And then you'll have more walks. And the other thing you have to account for is that dates are important. So if you use the, uh, the GTF in, GTFS import tool, you have to set a reference date. And um, in the scenario, in the very scenario that I showed, there is no tram service to construction work at the moment. So when naively using the, the current date, uh, many persons that would have uh, used the tram couldn't actually do this. So if you also set the appropriate date, then finally you reduce the number of walks again. And if it's still more walks than in the web wizard uh, case, and that may is very likely because the, due to the synthetic schedules, there is a bunching of, uh, of uh, uh, buses or trams. So there's too much service and uh, people use the tram too much. So look at the time, look at the date. And then uh, enjoy your uh, GTFS schedules. This is all I wanted to show you today. If you have any questions, ask them on the mailing list, uh, look at the documentation and uh, report any bugs that you can find. Thank you very much.